Hi friends, when we read a document, we make connections between different parts of the document to understand and to fill any knowledge gaps. For example, let's say we are reading a novel. In chapter 1, we have a character took some action and chapter 10 describe some background information to that character. Now by making the connection between chapter 1 and chapter 10, we can infer why that character took that particular decision in chapter 1 by making use of the information described in chapter 10. Okay, so we make connections one to understand and two to fill any knowledge gaps. Okay, now in a rack system, we chunk the document and we store the chunks or their embeddings in a vector store. We do not make any connections between the chunks and even when we retrieve, we retrieve multiple chunks independently and provide all those chunks to the uh, generator okay and we have different variants of the rack uh, the latest one being graph rack now in a graph rack we create high level communities and community summaries with the aim to answer the global questions more accurately for example what are the main themes discussed in a book or uh, how do you, uh, how do you, how do we rate uh, a particular character which is described uh, let's say throughout a book right but we are still not making the connections between different parts of the text recently there is a paper which proposed a new method where we still split our document into multiple chunks but we try to maintain or create some relationships or the connections between the uh, chunks okay so they call it a graph reader now so thomas uh, has implemented that paper uh, using lang graph okay so the way it works is in step one we create a graph from the document and in step two we create an agent which can explore this graph autonomously to extract all the relevant information okay the step two is not novel but the step one is which is where we are creating these connections okay so to begin with we have a document and we split the document into multiple chunks just as in a rag, and we maintain the sequential information between these chunks. Okay, for example, the chunk one, it's followed, it's preceded by chunk zero and followed by uh, uh, chunk two. Okay, and then from each chunk, we derive what is called atomic facts. Now, these atomic facts are, let's say, a short sentence or piece of information. Okay, and from these atomic facts, we further derive the entities as in a traditional knowledge graph okay now let's say this chunk has an entity and also this chunk has an entity uh, the same entity okay so these two chunks are connected by those uh, uh, those entities if these two chunks are talking about or have a relevant uh, information which is connected to each other so this way within this overall document even though we split it into multiple chunks, we are still able to make those connections by making use of these entities. Okay, so once we have the graph, okay. right. uh, let me zoom in. So that's the graph uh, construction part uh, which we just saw okay and then in the graph exploration part the user ask a question from the question we identify the relevant entities okay and we start with those entities and we go from bottom up approach okay so then we extract the atomic information relevant to those entities and we know which chunks have those atomic information since we are using an agent to explore the graph the agent has an autonomy to further explore the nearby nodes if it require further information to comprehensively answer the user query okay so this part we will explore further uh, in the next video but in this video let's see how we can construct uh, the graph okay all right uh, this four level uh, graph 
All right. So as I mentioned, we are going to use LangChain for constructing the graph and long graph for creating the agent, which we will see in the next uh, uh, video. All right. Uh, we will be using Neo4j uh, for storing our uh, knowledge graph. All right. So connect to the graph. So we have four types of entities, right? The first one is the document and then the chunks, atomic facts and the key elements. So we create an ID for each of those and uh, we impose some constraint that they must be unique here. And we obviously need an LLM. Uh, so if you want, you can use open uh, source LLMs, but I'm using uh, OpenAI LLM. So provide your API key. Now for the knowledge base, uh, we use Wikipedia tool to extract uh, some knowledge about this Joan of Arc. Okay, that's the document. So we extract the document. It contains about some 6,500 characters and here are the first 500 uh, characters. Okay. All right. Okay. And then, so in this graph construction, uh, in this four layered graph construction, uh, one second. So the, the document and the chunks, uh, we already know. The new thing is we have to extract the atomic information and then the entities and then make the connections uh, between uh, the four layers of hierarchy, okay? So here we have our system prompt. So you are an intelligent assistant tasked with meticulously extracting both the key element atomic facts, key elements and atomic facts from the long text, okay? All right, so the key elements are as in a traditional knowledge graph. These are the elements uh, are the nodes type of information. Okay, so the key elements are uh, the nouns, the character, time, events, places, numbers, uh, etc. And adjectives, things like that. And then the atomic facts. These are the smallest individual in, indivisible of facts. Okay, you can think of it as a short sentence which contain a piece of information. Okay, so these are presented as concise uh, statements. Okay, now uh, you can go over uh, this prompt, but here the important thing is, uh, for example, whenever applicable, replace pronouns with their specific uh, noun counterparts. For example, replace I, he, etc. with the actual names. Okay, uh, as, uh, as we discussed, let's say we are reading a novel and we have a character name, but at uh, places, uh, the characters are referred to as he or she. So when we construct this knowledge graph, we want to use the actual names so that we can make connections between different paragraphs slash chunks of the text. Okay. All right. So that's our prompt. And uh, just we create a prompt template. And then uh, we use a Pydantic for defining uh, uh, the model. Okay. So we have two elements. The first one is uh, the elements. Uh, the key elements and the atomic fact which we just saw right so the key elements are the actual nouns uh, so and so forth and then the atomic facts these are the smallest concise uh, indivisible facts all right and then initialize or instantiate a language model and then since we wanted our output in this structured format we are going to use this uh, structured llm and construct a chain now we'll come to this in a second here we define another function to process the document. So here we provide uh, the content of our, do our document along with the document name. Obviously we will define uh, the chunk size and the overlap, etc. So we use text splitter to split it into chunks. And then uh, we loop over these chunks. We loop over these chunks uh, somewhere here. Yeah, so we loop over these chunks and from we invoke the LLM. Uh, here we invoke the LLM to extract these two pieces of information, right? Uh, uh, the key elements as well as uh, the atomic facts. And then here we are processing as well as we are ingesting the data uh, to the graph database, okay? So the ingestion query, it uh, looks like this. So as we saw, it's a four level, four layered information. At the very top, we have the document, okay? And then we have the chunks. Now each chunk has a text index and we, each chunk has a document name because we might be working with multiple documents. So we connect the chunk to its document. So here in the form of metadata, but this is where we actually make the connection. Okay. So this document has chunk C. Uh, maybe I'll show you the graph. Uh, it will become clear to you. Okay. So this is what we are going to build. Here we have the document, one document. Uh, let me show. Yeah. 
we have one document which is in this uh, uh, orange color which is split into these four chunks which are in blue so we have four chunks and uh, the relationship is a uh, hash chunk okay and then each chunk we split it into these atomic facts okay so uh, atomic facts these are in yellow okay and then from each atomic fact we derive the key elements as in a traditional knowledge graph okay now if two different chunks have the same element they will be connected right so that way we are making and maintaining the relationship between different chunks of this document okay that's the novelty of this uh, research paper all right Yep. Okay. And then we have the atomic facts. The atomic facts are connected to the chunks. And at the very bottom layer, we have the key elements. And the key elements are connected to the atomic facts. Okay. All right. Uh, and then in this part of the code, uh, we are making uh, the connection uh, between uh, just the chunks. For example, uh, each chunk uh, is followed by and preceded by uh, which chunks. Okay, that's what we are doing here. So we build the knowledge graph. Uh, and this is where we actually invoke the function. So this is the actual text, uh, which has some 6,500 characters, something like that. And since we are using 2,000 characters for each chunk, so we will have four chunks. Okay, so we'll have four chunks uh, and then uh, this is the name uh, we give to the document. Okay, so we build a graph uh, similar to this. Uh, just some exploration of the graph. Uh, so if you look at uh, this atomic facts, we said it's a concise statement or some factual information, right? So here what we are doing is we are extracting all the atomic facts from the graph and then using this tick token we are simply counting how many tokens each atomic fact has and then we are simply plotting a histogram okay so as you can see uh, most of the atomic facts has less than 30 tokens okay uh, uh, in this area most of the atomic facts now in this graph we have uh, how many yeah so from those four chunks we have in total 43 atomic facts now if you look at Yeah. So out of those 43, as you can see here, uh, maybe close to 30-ish uh, has a, a token length of less than 30-ish. Okay. Now let's look at uh, a couple of those atomic facts. So here again, we are querying the graph uh, using the text size, uh, the top three, as well as uh, the bottom three. Okay. So we are simply extracting the atomic facts which are shortest in length as well as longest in length okay so these three are the shortest in length as you can see in 1920 Jonah of Arc was canonized by people uh, sorry Pope uh, Benedict so this is a one piece of information now this one uh, is the longest uh, one uh, which one yeah this one is the longest uh, atomic fact okay uh, and here uh, we have the elements at the very bottom level so we have total 216 uh, key elements, right? Derived from these 43 atomic facts, which are derived from these four chunks, which are derived from this one document. So if you look at these key elements, 216 elements. All right. Uh, so here we query the graph to extract all the key elements. And then for each element, we are measuring how many connections it has, has key element, okay? How many connections? Uh, 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 it has and we order by the number of connections so the element Jonah of arc is the most common one uh, with these 15 uh, connections uh, uh, connections okay and then this film English so and so forth okay so that's just uh, some exploration uh, to make sense of uh, the what kind of graph we have uh, uh, again the atomic facts key elements uh, etc so we build the graph and in the next video we will create an agent autonomous agent using long graph so when the user ask a query using the query we identify the key elements from the query okay 
Now, once we know the key elements, we can identify those key elements in this graph and we go from bottom to top. Okay. So from the key elements, we know what information they are associated with and in the next level, what chunks they are associated with. So we can extract all that information in a systematic manner and if that information is not needed, since the agent is autonomous, we can start again at the nodes or the, the key elements and we can search the neighborhood of the key elements, okay? The neighborhood of the key elements to further extract the key information and the relevant chunks, okay? So this way, just like how a human mind make connections between different parts of the text or in this case, different chunks of the text. So we are trying to make or mimic that connection or relatability between different chunks uh, in this method. Um, if you find this video useful, useful uh, please consider uh, subscribing, uh, sharing it with others. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.